Joining me now is Congressman Matt Gates from Florida. Congressman, thank you so much for being here with uh, us. Oh, thanks for having me. And you know, I think all New Yorkers are just future Floridians. Amen. Just got a place down in Florida. See, so eventually there's hope we'll, for everyone. We'll do the migration entirely. Thank you so much for being here. We're at CPAC Live, and I want to talk a little bit about the FBI yeah. and your statement that we need to abolish the FBI. Can you share with our listeners what's happening? Well, if what? we don't, if we don't bring them to heel, there are good FBI agents all over the country. Uh, who do work to protect us, but inside of the Washington field office in the swamp of DC, too much power has accumulated and that has subjected the FBI to political capture. And they don't deserve that and we don't deserve that. So I'm hearing from whistleblowers who are detailing a sense of politics that informs on a lot of the decisions that really should be based on the facts and the law, and that's what we're going to be drilling down on. You know, I'm so glad you're doing that. We need the public trust in our institutions, yeah. and and thank you for, for helping to pave the way. Uh, one of the greatest threats, I think, uh, against America is China, and we yes. see so much uh, Chinese propaganda. I'm concerned about the southern border wall being wide open and Chinese fentanyl coming over. How concerned should we be? Well, China seeks to dominate us. And when they sent a spy balloon, I think our own Department of Defense spent four or five days asking what its pronouns were before we shot it down. China steals our intellectual property. They surveil our military assets. And we have a Biden administration that has gone soft on China because I believe the Biden family is compromised by China. I mean, I've observed the records that show that Hunter Biden used to have his investment meetings at the Chinese embassy. And in exchange for them hosting that, he was required to have one-on-one -on -one meetings with the ambassador. Now, do you think that's because Hunter Biden had some unique contribution or because they were using access and leverage and they were paying for it? And we also see how that corruption manifests in policy. When Trump was in charge, we had a special China initiative at the Department of Justice that went after their influence campaigns against our politicians, against our leaders in academia. And Joe Biden dissolved the China initiative when he became president. And I think that's gaslit a lot more of the malign influence that they seem to be engaging in around the world and here in our country. Yeah, and we appreciate you speaking out on this. We've got to be able to get the message out. Um, Congressman, uh, looking ahead to 2024, and, and we've got Donald J. Trump, we've got Vivek Ramaswamy and Nikki Haley, and I'm sure we're going to have a number of others. Do you think that a crowded uh, bench of people in the primary is a good thing? In some cases, I think that competitive primary elections really sharpen our candidates for an effective general election. But then there are campaigns that sort of seem built out of vanity. Like I look at Vivek, smart guy, sharp, and we could actually use Vivek's skills in the government if he wants to serve in the government. He would have been a terrific candidate, maybe for the U.S. House of Representatives or maybe the Senate. But instead of fitting in in an area that would be consistent with his skills and experience and name ID, he's decided to engage in some vanity project Vivek is not going to be the next president, and we will be deprived of otherwise intelligent service because he's chosen to, I think, engage in a pretty quixotic campaign. Nonetheless, big primaries, robust ideas. Uh, I think that they can serve to draw in voters. And look at what the Democrats did in Iowa. They just totally abandoned Iowa as the first in the nation caucuses. So maybe even the tactics of how the primaries are set up might inure to the benefit of Republicans ultimately in the general election. Well, we are sure looking forward to 2024. Final question for you, hope for America's future with so much against us. Uh, everything from, you know, the border wall, uh, defund police, our children uh, being indoctrinated yeah. in schools, so much negativity. Uh, what is your hope for the future of America? I have seen how fast we can turn it around. You know, I am of the age where when I was coming out of college, coming out of law school, the Obama economy was a wet blanket over ambition in our country. It really limited our essence of achievement and what we could achieve. And I saw how fast when Donald Trump got into office, we became productive and energetic. And there was an air of confidence about America that was infectious. And I know we can do it again. That's why I'm supporting President Trump's reelection. And it's certainly why I hope that uh, people keep that hope and become part of the turnaround. You know, Congressman, when I saw you earlier, I pointed over to you and I said to my husband, 
he, I believe, at some point will run for president. Oh my gosh, don't wish that on it. me. Uh, that's so that a... might be in your future, sir. We'll be oh, keeping an eye on you. Thank you're you so a great much. man. Thank you. Thank you for your courage and stepping and standing up, stepping up for us and all Americans. God bless you. Thank you. Thanks Thank for having you. me.